Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to run TikTok ads for app installs. We are gonna be going through the entire process. I'm gonna be starting with first, how to actually connect your app to the TikTok ads account. Then we're gonna talk about how to track conversions, installs, different events inside of the TikTok ads manager from your app. And then finally, we'll actually walk through how to set up your first campaign and start getting those awesome app downloads. So let's jump right in. So the first thing that you will need to do is go through and create a TikTok ads account. If you don't already have a TikTok ads account, you can click the link down below in the description. And I actually have a partnership with TikTok where you can get a $500 ad credit when you spend $500. So I encourage you to check that out because it's basically like a free $500 if you're gonna spend $500 anyway. So um, go through and use that link to sign up for your ads account. Once you've gone through and signed up for your ads account, you will be taken to your actual TikTok ads manager here. The, your ads manager will look something like this. What you're gonna wanna do is up in this top kind of bar up here, you're gonna wanna click on tools and events. And from here, this is where we can actually go through and connect our TikTok ads manager to our app. So we wanna come over here to the apps events here and then we're gonna click manage. And then right here, we're going to want to click on create new app. And then it's going to ask for the download URL. Now you can see we have the iOS and the Android. If you are running Android and iOS ads, then you're gonna to wanna to go through and do that this process for both your iOS and Android ad. I'm just gonna go and do it for iOS just for the purpose of this tutorial. But what you're gonna to wanna to do is come over here and grab your app URL. I'm just using Instacart here as a demo, of course. And then grab it, grab it from the app store. You're gonna go through and click this and paste it in there. TikTok is then going to search that URL, click right here and then find the app for you. Now from this point, you wanna go through and hit next. And then this is where it's going to ask for your tracking settings. Now this is something that trips a lot of people up. When it comes to tracking events inside of your app from the ads, you will need to have a third party software do that for you. There currently is not a native way inside of TikTok to build those events. You can see here, you have the option to connect to a mobile measurement partner, or if you don't want to use a mobile measurement partner, you can click this down here, but just know that for advertisers who don't use a, do not use a tracking partner, TikTok for Business currently only supports direct traffic to the app store drive consideration. So if somebody goes through and you're running an ad to say for Instacart here, it will only take them to this page and you'll only be able to see clicks that came from the ad. You won't, yeah, actually be able to see things like downloads, purchases, in-app events, things like that. So it is very important that you go through and get one of these third-party measurements. Now you may be asking, which one should I get? You can see here there is 10 or so that you can go through and choose from. I would recommend if you are brand new to this space or if you're looking for a third-party app measurement provider, for AppFlyer, you cannot go wrong with their kind of the leader in the industry. And the next one that I've really liked as well is Branch. So one of those two would probably be the ones that I would recommend, but I think any of these will get the job done. So once you've found your app provider, Provider, you can go through and click on here. Now, what's nice about this? Well, of course, from this point, it is going to be different for whatever third party measurement you end up using. But TikTok does have a nice little link here for the instructions for configuring all of these. And it's very easy. If you just send this over to your developer or you can even go through and do it yourself, you can just follow the instructions that they give you. For example, here, if we go and click in branch and I'll leave a link to this down below as well. So you can just have easy, you can click get to right where you need to do for these instructions. If you click here for branch, for example, if we click inside of this, you can see this is the table of contents and it has nice screenshots on exactly how to get the numbers and the tags that you're going to need and then the pre-configured events inside of here. So you can go through and you'll need to copy and paste the clicking URL here and the default impression tracking URL as well here. And then once you have those, you can hit confirm. And then once you've gone through and hit confirmed, you'll see something like this where it says, okay, here's your events. And you can go through and track those. Obviously I can't do that for this demo account right here because I don't actually have like the branch tracking on this, but just go through and follow those steps and then you'll be good to go. And then now I'm gonna hop into an account that actually has this all set up. So you can see what this looks like when it's all done and it's ready to start running ads inside of your account. Okay, so once you have that all done, and I'm assuming most people will wanna do this for both iOS and Android, you'll see this is what it will kind of look like. You can see you'll have the two apps inside of there. And now from this point, what we can do is actually go through and create an app install campaign. Now in order to create the campaign, what you can do is come over here to campaign, and then chances are you are not going to have anything inside of here, but we're gonna go through and click on create new campaign. And we're going to choose the advanced creation. This is gonna give us more options inside of TikTok for targeting and different things like that. So we're going to go with the advanced option here. And then don't worry, I'll walk you through all the settings that you're gonna to need to know. So the first thing is it's going to ask for an advertising objective. This is very easy for running app install campaigns. We want to run with the app promotion conversion. Then you can see here, we have, there are two different campaign types. You can either do app install or app retargeting. Now, most people getting started, you're gonna do app installs. You can go through back over here and then run an app retargeting as well. But the setup here is going to be very similar no matter which one you start with. 
And then I would recommend leaving Smart Performance Campaign off for now. And then you can see right here, you can opt into iOS 14 campaigns. As you see, turning the toggle on ensures you're able to reach these users. If you toggle this off, your ads will not reach devices 14.5 or later. So I would recommend testing this inside of your account to see which works best for you. I'm going to opt in it for this example. And then now it is going to ask us to actually go through and select the app. And this is right here is where if you've been went through and set up everything correctly and connect the app to your ads account, then this drop down you can go through and select the app that you are wanting to target right here. Or if you didn't opt into this, it will ask you for the app later. So I'm going to opt out of this just to show you exactly where you can connect it to your app later in here in a minute. Then you can go through and give this a campaign name. We're just going to leave it this default to leave things easy. We don't have any special categories to declare. If you're in one of these housing, employment, or credit, you want to check one of those. Then we're not going to create split test campaign budget or set a campaign budget at this point. We're going to set the budget at the ad group level. These are more advanced features. So we're just going to keep this very basic and go through and hit continue here. And then now this is where it's going to ask for the ad group name. I typically go back and name the ad group after I've kind of worked with the targeting here. And then this is the other area where it will ask you to go through and select the app. So if you didn't select the app for when you opted into iOS 14, this is where it will ask you to select that app. You need to do the Android or the Apple version. We're going to do Apple here, the iOS. And now TikTok is going to ask which placements we would like to opt into. You can see you can either do automatic placements here or you can select specific placements. If you just wanted to show up on TikTok and the TikTok app only, then you might want to go through and opt out of those. However, if you are running an app install campaign, I would recommend testing this global app bundle. I have seen very cheap downloads from this network, so something worth testing for sure. But if you wanted to keep things easy, you can just do automatic placement and TikTok will go through and kind of optimize that for you. You'll just want to check that data as it comes in. So we're going to keep this easy and just keep this on the auto automatic placements for now. Okay. And then here, as we go down to targeting, you're going to notice that TikTok is going to recommend that you go with automatic targeting or with like a broad based targeting. And honestly, it actually does work really well. Just having as broad targeting as possible and let TikTok can kind of take the wheel. However, what I do like to do when I am setting up a ads campaign is kind of this structure right here. So I'll start with the kind of the main conversion of the app install campaign. And then inside of the ad group, I'll take one ad group that is targeting broad. So we'll leave it as broad as possible. And then I'll do one that is targeting interest specific. So this is basically like interest specific is me going through and selecting the audience. Broad is TikTok going through and selecting the audience. And then I will take at least, you know, one to three ads and put them into a broad bucket. And I will take those same three ads and put them into my interest based audience that I went through and created and see which one performs better. In my testing, the crazy thing is, is a lot of times the broad audience does perform better. So if you wanted to run a broad audience, basically you would just go through and kind of set the location, the gender, the age that you are wanting to target, any of the languages. And then you can go through and do the spending power and household income inside of here. And then all of these other audiences, basically you would leave blank, except maybe for this devices. This is sometimes helpful with app installs. You can see you can go through and target specific versions of iOS, whether they're connected to Wi-Fi, 2G, 4G. But this targeting right here, the audience targeting and the interest and behavior, you would leave that blank if you were running a broad based audience. You know, if that's all too confusing for you, don't worry. Just go through and select your audience and do a different targeting. But if you wanted to test audiences, I would leave this first one blank and then go through and create that campaign. And then once you've built this, all you would need to go, do is go through and duplicate that campaign. And I'll show you how to do that as well to go through and create the audiences. So this first one we're going to call automatic targeting. And then I'll show you here in a minute, we'll come back and duplicate this and I'll show you how kind of the audiences and the interest and behavior that you can do briefly inside of here. Next, we have the device price. Now this is, if you do have a more expensive app, this could be useful. You can do any price or you could do a specific range. So if you wanted more expensive devices, you can target up to a thousand plus here. And then finally, we have the actual budget and schedule. You can either do a daily budget or a lifetime budget. Keep in mind when you are running a daily budget, it is $20 minimum per ad group. So that is something to keep in mind. If you wanted to do a lifetime budget, you could go through and do that. And basically I want to say spend $420 over a complete lifetime over these specific dates. And then it will spend in between those times. Typically though, I like to do a daily budget. I find it's just a lot easier. If the campaign is working, it's easier to scale it up. Or if it isn't working, it's easier to scale it down. So most of the time I use daily budget. And then you can set the start date or end date. We're just gonna have it starting, you know, the, tomorrow basically. And then here you can do day parting, like say that you're calm, one of the, the apps that helps people fall asleep. You could say, Hey, I only, only want to run ads between midnight and you know, 6 AM, things like that. Generally, unless you're like an app like that, you probably will want to run all day. And or unless you have data that tells you otherwise. So we're just gonna leave this on all day. But if I wanted to run, you know, only between certain hours, I can go through and block those out here. And you can see those are the times that it will run, but we're gonna go through and clear that. And then finally, the optimization goal here that we want to do is install 
install. If you wanted to do an in-app event, you could go through and do that. Just keep in mind, you would have to have that built out in your third-party registration in order to go through and do that. So you could go through and optimize towards any of these. If you're just getting started and you don't have a lot of data on your pixel, I would generally recommend starting with installs. So now we can go through and set our target CPA. This is optional as well. And once again, this is one of the things that I leave blank to begin with. Let the data kind of write out, let TikTok bid and figure out where I am. Then once I have a benchmark, then I can come through here and adjust this. If you wanted to be really conservative or if you felt really confident, you could go through and give this a value. Like say, I want to get an app install around 75 cents or around under $3, you could go through and set that. But for me, because we're pretending this is a brand new account, I'm going to leave this blank. And now this is where you can actually go through and create your ad. Now you can use something called Spark Ads right here, which is taking a, an existing ad from one of your accounts and running it as an ad. It's an easy way to go through and test a lot of different creative. If you wanna learn more about Spark Ads, you can check out the link up above. I have a full video on that. But we're just gonna come down here and we are going to grab one from our library. We can either do a single video or a carousel here. We're gonna grab one of these and one of the ones that we've run inside of here for this specific app. And I do apologize that a lot of this is blurred out because this is like a real account here. So I don't want to share too much on this one, but you kind of get the idea. You go through and upload your video. If you aren't sure what kind of creative to run or if you want more resources, I have links down below on ways to get different creative and the best kind of things that perform there. I don't want to cover it in this video because I don't want to make it too long. I want to make this all about kind of the app campaigns, but then you can go through and get your, add your text here, like install now, you know, or put something really creative here. So we're just gonna put install now, but you probably want to put something more <laughs> creative than that inside of this box. It'll show up in the text in this right hand column. And then you can go through and customize a call to action. And this is actually where you'd probably want to put the install now. Honestly, you wouldn't want it to do, you know, you just have download, but this could be like some awesome description inside of here. And the last thing you will want to do is go through and give this app a name, give it a creative a name, like add one, add two, or you know, uh, name it something a little bit more specific. Then from there, we can go through and scroll down here and you can go through and set, select a web events pixel, but it, because this is a app, you probably are not wanting to do this. Make sure you have your impression tracking URL here and your click tracking URL down here. This will be populated from your third party registration, whatever one you went with. In this case, we are using branch for this specific account. And then from this point, you can go through and hit submit and you are ready to go. Your ads from this point will be submitted and TikTok says around a day, but I think I see within four to eight hours, the ads will go through and get approved. And then from that point, you'll see a view that looks something like what I'm going to show you next. Okay. So after you launch that campaign, you're going to see something that looks like this. This is the campaign, the ad group and the ads. And as you recall, according to our strategy, I like to start with a broad based targeting, but then also test it against an interest base. So if you wanted to go through and do that and test those two against each other, what you can do, do is come back over here to your campaign, click inside of here. And you can see we've already run this strategy. I had the manual running against the auto targeting and you can see we ran these, but the auto targeting actually ended up winning out better. You can see right now for this specific account, we are getting an app install of for a dollar 84 basically. And this is where it's important to have that conversion tracking because we can actually see the cost per install that is coming through. Now, if you wanted to go through and test a manual campaign like this though, what I would do is go through and simply copy this and then just copy into the existing campaign right here, click existing campaign. And then I would go through and name this interest targeting or manual targeting, whatever you wanted it to be there and then go through and hit copy. And then it will copy all of the ads that you created inside of that ad group. And then it will copy, of course, the ad group settings inside of here. And then from this point, you can go through and adjust the targeting. So then we can go through and say now, in this case, let's say that we wanted to target things like mobile games. We could go through into this interest in behavior and do clicking games here. And then now we have all of these different things that we can go through and target. Now in this interest in behavior, there's lots of things that you can search. You can see there's things like interest, purchase in intent, video interactions, creator interactions, and hashtag interactions. So I would encourage you to go through and play through in this a little bit and to see what would be applicable to who you would want to be targeting and just do lots of testing, to be honest. Inside of this account, this is a fairly new account. So I've gone through and tested the broad targeting and the interest-based targeting, but now I'm going to be creating new interest-based targeting to test against the broad ones to see which one performs better. And then of course, our metric here is cost per install. So we're just testing it to see which gets the lowest cost per install from that point. So once you've gone through and selected your audience here, so let's say that we did go through and for whatever reason, we're targeting people who are interested in Halloween, we could then go through and hit continue to ads. 
and then just go through and publish this ad group inside of there. And then you would be running both of those side by side. And like I said, this isn't something that you have to do. This is just what I recommend doing is testing these two right from the beginning. But if you only had budget to run one of these, you could go through and do that as well. It's just kind of a best practice for me. But that is all there is to it. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe and like this video on your way out. It really does help a channel like this grow and get this video out to more people. And we'll see you in the next one.